<laughs> hey there everybody, Tommy, how's it going? I'm doing well and it's a perfect day to make a let's play of a game banjo Zooey, the game you now see. Boy, the center theme is going by so fast I can't even keep up with it, so maybe I can just slow down enough to maybe catch the kazoo beat. Almost missed it. Anyway, I'm making this LP without any planning involved, so hopefully it's a decent first let's play to do. I'm only doing this because I got my wisdom teeth taken out only yesterday. My mouth is still recovering from surgery, so I am doing this to distract myself from my aching tonsils. Oh, but that is not the only reason that I was inspired to make Let's Plays. No, I've been wanting to do this for an extremely long time. Ever since I started watching Chugga Conroy years ago, I just got addicted. I got equipment to make Let's Plays just this year, and now the time is at last year. I have found the perfect time to begin. Even though this idea was spontaneous, I have reasons to think this is the ideal time for me to begin my adventure of becoming a super lp -er. Hopefully you somewhat enjoy my attempts at being entertaining. Hi guys, I'm John Bro, and I cordially invite you, whatever that means, to my first Let's Play, Banjo-Kazooie. We're just gonna dive right in, because I don't really know how I'm supposed to start this. And, uh, as I said in the singing intro, I really haven't planned this out much at all, so I'm just gonna kinda play and see what happens. Because, well, the intro actually isn't accurate anymore, because, um, the time that I got my wisdom teeth taken out was a few days ago, rather than just yesterday. Because it's taken me a while to get this setup actually working with the, uh, the recording, so... Yeah, but my mouth is still recovering. It's actually my third day after having the wisdom teeth surgery, so... This is supposed to be the weirdest feeling day for the inside of my mouth. Inside of my mouth. But, uh... Yeah, the basic idea, I guess, in, or that I have in my mind, is that one of the, one of the kind of big things about a Let's Play is to just not stop talking. And so this is kind of the perfect time, I think, for me to start doing a Let's Play, because, uh, like the weird feeling inside of my mouth where my, uh, my wisdom teeth should be, I, I get this feeling whenever I'm not talking, so just talking a lot is a good way for me to distract myself from the weird feeling inside of my mouth, and I'm sure that's very interesting, and I'm sure you wanted to hear about that, but whatever. So I just picked Banjo-Kazooie, because I've been in kind of a Nintendo 64 mood lately, and, uh, well, I haven't actually played this game played this game in a really long time, so. But I've beaten it uh, beaten it 100% before, and I don't think it would be that difficult to do it again. So I'm just kind of gonna uh, kind of gonna you know play it by ear, I guess. Unfortunately, I think you'll find it's Tootie. She's quite and quite cute and kind. <laughs> Why did I say quite? Yeah, well, uh, th this setup is a little bit weird for me, though, because I'm... I mean, I I've finally gotten to where I can use just one computer to record vo both my voice and the video and have them be separate. Because I just got a whole new computer, kind of... Well, not really a whole new computer, but uh, I had to have a whole new setup on my computer because it messed up horribly recently. So, yeah, so that's working a little bit better. But it's still a little bit of a problem because... Oh, well, I actually forgot what I was supposed to, or what I was saying. Maybe I'll think of it eventually, but... Here we are. We are introduced. We haven't even, even been... Okay, there we go. Now we're being introduced to the actual main characters of the game. That is Banjo. That is Kazooie. Outside, there was Bottles and Tootie. Tootie being Banjo's sister. And I don't understand how she has, like... She has this bright yellow hair. And... Like, how, how does that work, dude? Bears and monkeys and things have hair and fur? Like... I don't know. But she's... yeah, brown hair, or brown fur and bright yellow hair. I don't see how that works. So we have Tootie. That's a wonderful name. And then we have Grunty the Witch. That's another wonderful name. Personally, Bottles is my favorite name of the characters that we've met so far. And Kazooie's the only one who knows what's going on. Hooray. Don't scratch and bite, my little bear. You'll soon need bigger underwear. Oh no, she's got her. Somebody, well, I don't know if that, that voice might not work for bottles. Banjo, wake up now. 
That voice probably doesn't work with Kazooie either. Now oh, what do you want, Kazooie? Let's get outside, those trouble. No, that's really weird. And here we have the overlapping voices of uh, Grunty's laughter. Hooray. And the gameplay begins. Now, at the very beginning of the game, all you can do is run around and you can barely jump. Look at this sad, pathetic jump of Banjo's. So we're just going to keep going and meet Bottles the Mole, which I personally think Bottles is a wonderful character, even if he is very simple. I'm Banjo, and this is my buddy Kazooie. Sure is a strange-looking buddy, Banjo. Can it talk? Better than you can, Bot... Bot Coggle Boy... Oh, oh, now I remember what I was saying. Yeah, my setup is a little bit weird because, um... I can't actually see this game on my TV. I can only see it on my computer. And so, the way I'm playing it, it's on, like, this 2 by 3 inch screen that is on a bigger screen, but, uh, like... Yeah, the, the program that I'm using is only allowing me to see a very, very tiny bit of, or a very tiny screen playing the game. Okay, so we're gonna press B to skip this tutorial where you learn all the moves separately and uh, all that stuff, just because I don't really feel like doing all that. But I will show all the moves, the whole move set. Now we can jump higher because we just automatically learned every skill that we need to know at this point in time. You can run around, obviously, as I mentioned, press A to jump. Uh, you can press Z to crouch, press A while crouching to do this somersault move. You can press A and then A again in midair to do whatever this is called, some wing flapping, I, I don't know, probably has a name, which is helpful. Then press A and B to do the rat-a-tat rap, that's what that's called. The rat-a-tat rap. Press A in midair and press B, tap. It'll help you through a lot of crap. I was trying to make a rap and failed, so never mind. Those are lives. That's just one of the quicker ones that you can get at the beginning of the game. I didn't want to talk to Mole. I didn't want to talk to the Mole here. Okay, shut up, Bottles. Yeah, as much as I like Bottles, though, he can get a little bit annoying at times whenever he doesn't stop talking. And... I don't really exactly understand, like, the whole tutorial area of this game. This is Spiral Mountain, by the way. Spiral... Whoa, I forgot that the controls up and down are inverted whenever you're looking upward. Um, they're, they're like all these... There's like onions and... I think that's an onion. Oh. I can't believe... I, whoa, I just, I just got hurt by a tutorial enemy twice. Wow, that is pathetic. But uh, yeah, there are all these carrots and onions and cauliflower things and... They're, so they're all like vegetables. So is this is this, does this mean this is like an anti-veggie sort of intro? I don't know, like, either they were, yeah, we're, it's, it's attacking vegetables or something. Maybe it's anti-vegetarian or something, I don't know. But anyway, the, the thing that we just got, which we're going to get another one of, uh, one of here in a second. Well, we just got it, I don't know what I'm talking about. These are, well, they're hollow honeycombs. I'm not really sure what they're actually called. I didn't really pay attention to the text. I'm just going to call them Honey Nut Cheerios, because they're round and they have holes in them. And let's see, is there another honey cut, uh, honey, honey nut Cheerio over here? Come on now. Yeah. And behind this waterfall is another life. Love that little noise that it makes. Yeah. Okay, well here while we're in the water, I might as well show that B, if you press B, you can dive into the water. You can press B in the water a bunch of times to swim around really fast and then... A to kind of just waddle along. I don't know how waddling works underwater, but yeah, that's the term I used. And so, it's a lot like, or really a lot of the controls are a lot like Super Mario 64 if you've played that. Which you probably have, but if you haven't, then well... You should get on to that. And there's another one, there's another Honeycomb... Uh, honey Nut Cheerio, I want to keep calling it that. Also, you can climb up trees. I don't think you can climb up every kind of tree, but there's one that you can climb. Uh, there should be a Honey Nut Cheerio somewhere along one of these trees. I think it's this one. And if it's not, then it's the next one down. Actually, I think it's the next one down. Yeah. Let's go over here and get it. Here we go! And it makes a really cool noise once you get all of those, but uh, I guess I should explain what they do, too. If you get all of those Honey Nut Cheerios, then uh, all six of them, which 
the way it's set up, the game is set up, there will always be like a set of six somehow. There might, there might be like two or three per world that we are we're going to enter worlds later. Oh yes, this is press press B or press Z to crouch and press B to do the beak barge. I think that's what this is called. If I'm wrong, then uh, I don't know. I don't care. But yeah, um, if you get six of these, then the life that I lost earlier that that was totally on purpose, you know, with the yeah. But you get a piece added on, kind of like a heart container in Zelda. So that's how that works. And I don't exactly remember how many uh, how many honeycomb life pieces that you end up with. So we could go around the spiral mountain, or we could just take a shortcut and do the somersault here. Well, I thought it was going to be a shortcut, now it's a detour. Let's just go along and watch, or listen, as the beautiful sound effects of the game make the floor sticky. Now, if you hadn't learned all the moves, if you decided to go through with a tutorial instead of going, or just skipping it and getting all the pieces, you don't have to get any of those honey nut Cheerios by yourself, but if you, uh... Anyway, if you don't skip the tutorial, then this bridge will be broken, and you have to learn all the moves to have it be fixed. But since I skipped it, then it's, it's fixed anyway. I've actually gotten across this bridge without it, uh, without it being fixed before, which was quite difficult, but I, I managed. So you can actually go ahead to the first world of the game without learning all the moves if you glitch out the game. This fine contraption, I'm told, will make me young and tooty old. Let me go, you fat hag! Man, that's, that's harsh. Well, understandable, though. I mean, it's not every day that you get kidnapped by a giant fat creature that is self-centered. Well, actually, it is if you're Princess Peach. Yes, Mistress Grunty, power is on. Soon be ready. Banjo, help! And then we hear Grunty's laugh again. And this is the entrance to Grunty's lair. My tricks and traps will see who wins. And there's the laugh again. Wow, you laugh so much. You're such the comedian, aren't you, Grunty? And this is her living room, I guess? Could use a little bit more furniture. Maybe these are the chairs. So this is the introduction to the Jiggy. There are a hundred of these in the game, and there are nine worlds in the game. Grunty's Lair doesn't really count as a world. It's the main... It's kind of the main area where all the... Where that branches out into all the other worlds. It's a really huge place, too. It's kind of crazy. Especially for the Nintendo 64 standards. But yeah, there are nine worlds in the game. Each one has ten Jiggies, and there also is a switch in every level that has uh, Grunty's face on it. And that will open up another Jiggy somewhere in Grunty's lair. So, basically you get 11 Jiggies from each of the nine worlds, and then we just got the one that we just picked up, which is the first one you get, and that all adds up to 100. Okay, can I, can I get on the thing? Yeah, okay. And you use the Jiggies, well... I mean, you don't have to get all of them, of course, if you played Super Mario 64 or something where you get all the stars and you kind of know what that, that's like already. But the use of the jiggies here is to fill in these paintings, and when you finish a painting, then it opens up the door to a new world. So, one difference between this game and Super Mario 64 is that you don't just jump right into the painting, even though there are paintings, I and mean, that might be disor disorienting, I don't know, but you don't just jump into the paintings to go into the world, you have to find the world's actual entrance. So, Mumbo's Mountain... Well, I, ke I keep forgetting you. I'm not... Okay, the weird... It's inverted. Okay, I'm going to scoot back a little bit. Not that we have to look at it. I'm just going to show you Mumbo's Mountain. This is where we're going to be heading next episode, and I'm going to see how many jiggies I can get there in one episode. It's not too hard of a world. It's, uh... I don't know. I'd say it takes about ten minutes, maybe a little bit more to beat. So, we'll figure that out next time on Banjo-Kazooie. And if you enjoyed this, spread the word, and... Uh, that ugly, barren, feathered freak is nothing but a stupid geek. Oh, that's harsh, Grunty. Although I'll have to agree, I'm, I am definitely a geek. Okay, let's go. See you next time.